Hi, welcome to this podcast for Chapter 8. Uh, this is, um, we're focusing on uh, this particular podcast on um, valuing ending inventory uh, with the perpetual method. And this particular one focuses on uh, FIFO. So, some terms just to be clear. Uh, sometimes you'll see assume a perpetual inventory record is kept in dollars. When it's talking about dollars, then what we have is a true perpetual uh, system. And of course, this one focuses on FIFO. All right, now this information up here at the top, this is the type of thing, this is what you will see in a homework or exam problem. And what I've done down here is create a table to help me answer these things. And so you might uh, you might want to you know take a second and write out this table if you'd like. Uh, because this is perpetual inventory, what I have done, and I hope you can uh, I hope you can see this here. Boy, it's shaky handwriting. I have basically made a T account. And that's what Remember, that's what perpetual inventory does. It tracks all of the ins and outs of inventory. So all of the debits to inventory are our purchases. And all of the credits to inventory is when we sell the product. Now, just to be clear, we are going to be looking for the cost. Remember, when we sell under perpetual inventory, um, we debit and credit accounts receivable and sales revenue for the price and that's what's given to us here this is the price of the units we sold we then also uh, debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory and that's what we're doing here for the cost and so what we need to figure out under our perpetual method is what was the cost of that sale what was the cost of that sale? What was the cost of goods sold for that sale? That sale, etc. And I and I have some more down here. I just ran out of room. Okay, so that is what we are looking to do. And I have all of that. I have transferred all of that information down here to this. Again, this big T account is basically what I'm uh, calling it. And if you want to pause the video and, and copy that down, I, I would recommend that. Okay, so under the perpetual method, um, the dates matter. It absolutely matters when we purchase and when we sold. And so I've listed all of the dates here. Um, and you can see some of the, some of the items. Uh, you know, this is a day where we had a purchase of 800 units. And then this is a day where we had a sale. I don't know, something happened here. It's kind of goofy. Let's get rid of that. All right. I don't know why that all... There we go. Something happened kind of weird there. So we'll just get that back. So here's our purchases. Then on June 2nd, we had a, we had a sale. And so when I have a sale, that's not a debit to inventory, right? it is a credit to inventory. Heh, <laughs> that's weird. Okay, so uh, that's what we need to figure out. And so we're just going to work our way down through this. So um, FIFO stands for first in, first out. And the only decisions we have to make are the days that we had a sell. We have to decide which units we sold. So in this particular case, so June 1st, there's no decision. June 2nd, we had a sale. We sold 600 units. Which 600 did we sell? Well, what was the first ones in? Uh, the first ones in on that date were those 800. So we sold uh, 600 of those, leaving 200. So 600 times $3.20. And I... I uh, have to do that calculation here. 600 times 320 is uh, 1920. So the cost of goods sold for that sale was 19, 
uh, $1,920. Then June 3rd, we have another purchase. No decision there. June 6th, we had a sell. We sold $1,600. So we, now we have a decision. Uh, which 1600 did we sell? Well, the first ones in were those 200. So we sold 200 of those, leaving zero. So this will get a little bit messy here, but we sold 200 times 320. And so the other 1400 came from here, right? So we sold 1400 at 310, and that leaves us 800 in ending inventory. So let me calculate that out. 200 times 320 is uh, 640 and 1400 times 310 is uh, 4340. So the cost of goods sold for that sale was 49 80. Okay, uh, June 7th, we had a purchase, no decision there. June 9th, we sold um, 1,000 units. So which 1,000 did we sell? Well, the first ones in were 800 of those, leaving zero. So 800 times 310. And then I sold 200 of those, leaving 1,000. And so that is 330. All right, I'm kind of out of room, so I'm just going to do this math on my calculator and then write it out. So 800 times 310. Um, maybe I won't because I don't have a place to do that. So let me just make, uh, that makes it look like I'm dividing it. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of only one of them. Well, oh, all right. Technical difficulties. Hold on. Uh, let's undo that. Just get that cursor out of here somewhere. Let's put the cursor down there. All right, let's try this again. Uh, I just wanted to get rid of that line. So anyway, so th this first one is uh, 2480. We'll write that down somewhere. 2480 and uh, 200 times 330, obviously 660, probably could have just done that in my head, plus 2480. So those two together uh, is a cost of goods sold of 3140. Okay, and then um, June 10th we have a decision, which 400 did we sell? Well, we sold 400 of those, leaving 600. So 400 times 330 is 13, uh, thir oops, 1320. Okay. Moving on. June 15th, no decision because that was a purchase. June 18th, we sold 1,400 units. So which 1,400 did we sell? Well, we sold all 600 of those, leaving zero. So 600 times 330. And we sold 800 of those, leaving 1,000. Oops, not 8,000. And uh, that was it. 340. All right, so 600 times 330 is 1980, and 800 times 340 is 2720. So the two together are 4700. 
That was the cost of goods sold for that sale. And then June 22nd, a purchase, no decision. June 25th, we sold 200 units. So which 200 units did we sell? We sold 200 from here, leaving 800. So 200 times 340 is $680. Okay, so we've now done the calculations. And remember, what we're trying to find out is what was, what's the value of the ending inventory and what is the value of the cost of goods sold? Well, the ending inventory is going to be my debit side of my account. So how many units in ending inventory do I have? Well, I have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 800 plus 500. And so I have 1,300 units. What is the value of those 1,300 units? Well, it's 800 times 340 and 500 times 350. And let's see, 800 times 340, 2720. I add that together. I get the value of ending inventory as 4470. Now, that number should look familiar to you if you've watched the periodic um, FIFO podcast because FIFO is exactly the same ending inventory and cost of goods sold whether it is periodic or perpetual. We're always left with our most recent purchases as our ending inventory uh, for FIFO. Now, for LIFO, for average, they're different. If they're the same, it's only a coincidence. But LIFO, they should be the same. Now, what that should mean to you is uh, you should use that as a check figure and still do the work. Um, over the years, some students will calculate it with one of the methods and then just plug that in for the other one. And if you've, if you've done the first one wrong, then you end up getting both of them wrong. So I would encourage you to just use that as a way to verify your work, not to uh, write it down. Okay, this sloppy mess over here on the credit side is our cost of goods sold. How many units did we sell? Well, if I add up all of those units, that equals 5,200 units. And um, what was the value? What is the total cost of goods sold? Well, we need to take 1920 plus 4980 plus 3140 plus 1320 plus 4700 plus um, uh, 680. And let me add those. And I come up with um, uh, 15 for uh, 15,420 as the value of the um, cost of goods sold. And if that's not what you came up with as cost of goods sold, we should probably erase that and try a new number of 16740 as cost of goods sold. That's the problem. I'm not doing this in the classroom. I don't have uh, students around to help me uh, make sure the number is calculated correctly. Okay, so if you were asked to find the value of the ending inventory for perpetual FIFO, we did that, and that amount is... Um, 4470 and if you were asked to find the amount of cost of goods sold for perpetual FIFO, it is uh, $16,740.